when I wanted to learn about this, I went onto YouTube and TikTok and I, I was watching all these videos and then over time, like the TikTok algorithm, it just made all these car detailing videos come to me. And then I kind of like learned as I went. I, in the beginning, I didn't really know everything about it, but over time I became really good with this stuff and I know a lot about it. Well, hi there, and welcome to Side Hustle Hero, the show laser focused on inspiring you to take action to start or to scale your side hustle income streams. I'm your host, Joan Paasivi. I love that there is such a treasure trove of helpful information online. For most side hustles, you don't need to know it all on day one. You can launch and learn. If you've been part of our community for a while, you know that at the end of each episode, I ask our guest for their best tip on starting or growing a side hustle. After 100 episodes, I can confidently say that the number one response is, just start, just do it. We can learn so much from doing. So to kick off year three of the podcast with episode 101, we're featuring our youngest side hustle hero to date, 17-year-old Leo Azizi. Leo is a great example of how you don't need to know it all to start. You just need to know enough to begin. He runs a car detailing business, primarily on the weekends as he's still in high school. This isn't his first or only side hustle. And while we'll learn about starting a car detailing business and finding clients, my real intent in sharing Leo's story is to inspire you to act on your side hustle idea or your expansion plans. But first, here's something fun. If our chats inspire you, a fun way to show your support is to head on over to sidehustlehero.com forward slash support, where you can shoot me over a, a large soy latte or maybe even a double espresso. It really is a thing and it's a fun way to give the show a caffeinated thumbs up. Thank you from the bottom of my coffee cup. Be sure to stick around for the end of the episode wrap up where I share the story of another teenager who, against all odds, has built a successful global company with a raving fan base in the jam business. But now here's my conversation with a young entrepreneur whose journey is really just beginning. But by the time he finishes college, I'll bet he will have built himself a thriving side hustle empire. Here's Leo Azizi. Well, welcome, Leo. Thank you for having me. So tell us what you're up to full time, Monday to Friday. So from Monday to Friday, I'm at school. I focus all my time during the weekdays on my school. And on the weekends, that's when I mostly focus on my car detailing. Great. So what grade are you in? How old are you? I'm 17 and I'm in grade 11. Nice. Well, outside of school, you got a lot of demands on your time, uh, studying, sports. Why did you want to add to your workload by starting a business? Well, I'm into like a lot of things like shoes and cars. And I just like I, I wanted to find a way to be able to fund that. So I wanted to find a way I could make the most amount of money possible, which I found was through car detailing. Oh, so there was other businesses then you looked at possibly getting into? Yeah. At first, when I first tried to make money, I actually started like a landscaping. I, I went on the next door app. I said to the neighbors, I said that I'm willing to do yard work for anyone or any like housework or anything for $20 an hour. And I actually got a few clients. I actually had some like recurring clients. I would go, uh, I would go to them like every weekend. It was like two or three people I had and I, I would charge them $20 an hour. But I realized like after three hours of doing that work, I would make like $60, but I was like done for the rest of the day. Oh man. I was, I was so tired. And I, I just realized like I, I had to find like a better way because after I did that, then I was like done for the day. I didn't want to do anything else. And I wasn't, I wasn't making that much. Right. So you're maxed out at 60 bucks less your cost a day. Yeah. Okay. So how did you stumble on the car detailing business? Well, I, I had detailed a few of my family's cars. And when I went to Seattle to see my cousins, I offered to detail their cars for free and my uncle who is like a he's like a car collector he has a bunch of ferraris nice 
he told me it'd be like a good idea if I started this into a business. So I visited them in the summer and at the end of the summer, I decided to turn this into a car detailing business. Very nice. And just out of curiosity, is your uncle self-employed as well? No, he's actually a plastic surgeon, but he's, he's like really into cars. So he, he kind of has knowledge on this stuff. And so did you look at focusing on higher end vehicles like the Ferraris or anything? I get really excited when I do those high-end vehicles, but I can't, I can't really choose the cars I get. I don't really mind working with anything. I guess doing a car is still doing a car and I'm still making money. Great. So. All right. So it's one thing to get the idea. I'm going to do car detailing, but how did you even begin to know first steps? How did you learn about what you needed to do and then what was involved? When I wanted to learn about this, I went onto YouTube and TikTok and I, I was watching all these videos and then over time, like the TikTok algorithm, it just made all these car detailing videos come to me. And then I kind of like learned as I went. I, in the beginning, I didn't really know everything about it, but over time I became really good with this stuff and I know a lot about it. Great. Cause it's been, I guess a little under a year now. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. yeah. Let's look at some of your startup costs. What did you have to buy? The first things I bought, I bought like this Amazon kit, which came with like some brushes, towels, some other uh, detailing tools that costed like $40. And I already, I had a home vacuum, which I used. Uh, I needed to get some soaps, which costed like $30 total. And actually when I told another one of my uncles about this, he bought me a pressure washer and a foam cannon, which I needed. Which was really like, yeah, nice. Was like, yeah, that was uh, really big at the time. So I think the initial cost to start with his stuff included, it would have been like two hundred fifty dollars. Right. But, but as I went on, I would reinvest and buy higher end supplies and more equipment that would make me more successful. Reinvesting some of those profits—that's what you've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, where are you actually cleaning the cars? Well, I, I'm mobile now. I just got my license. So I can, <laughs> All right. I, yeah, I can go to people's houses to do it. But for family members or uh, like my dad's friends or parents' friends, I usually do it at my house because they're from the downtown area. Okay. So anybody is kind of local to you, you'll, yeah, you'll, yeah. Go, you'll go to your house. Do you charge a fee to go on site to somebody's place to cover your no, travel time? No, there's no or? fee. Oh, that's, that's no included. Fee. Yeah. Well, how did you come up with your pricing? How did you know what to charge? Well, I did some research. I found other detailing places and I found they charge like a few hundred bucks. Like for a, for a full detail on like a bigger car, they usually charge like four to five hundred dollars. And I know that my price doesn't need to be competitive with that. So uh, I made it more reasonable for like a standard wash on a sedan. I do like fifty five dollars which I know other places do. They do around the same, but a bit more expensive. Okay. And for like an interior detail on an SUV, I'll do like 160 to 180 in that range, which I know other places do way more expensive. So I just try to keep it more competitive and uh, better priced. Well, it's not uncommon to use that as a, a strategy to come in at the lower end initially yeah. until you yeah. uh, build up that raving fan base and get those reviews. Yeah. Yeah. Have you adjusted your pricing at all then in those last uh, nine months or so? Yeah. In the beginning, I I had cheaper prices just to kind of start out and get customers. And then over time when I invested more and got higher end products, then I, I kind of raised it by like 30 to $40. Okay. For the the package. Yeah. So do you know how much you're earning per hour, roughly, when you take into account your costs? I think around 40, 35 to $40 an hour. Okay. So that's way better than you were doing in lawn care. Yeah. And it yeah. looks like you're not exhausted by it. <laughs> yes. How do you like the business? It's actually, at some parts, it's enjoyable. Sometimes uh, it's okay because... 
it's enjoyable when I get a job and the car is not even that dirty to begin with. And it's kind of relaxing, honestly. But some jobs I charge the same prices for, but the car looks like it was like a bomb exploded on the inside. Oh, man. <laughs> Only takes me like six hours, but I still get paid at the end of the day. So it's worth it. Right. So that could be a future adjustment to your pricing that it's yeah. this amount up to yeah. X amount of hours. But if it's over that, then it's this much yeah. per hour. Yeah. Well, tell us about that first paying customer, because that must have been pretty special. What was the car? What did you do? They had a Tesla. I did the full detail on their car. So interior and exterior. I charged $140. It wasn't too bad of a job, but uh, that was when I first started. So my prices were lower. So it was $140. Usually now I think it's for the full package uh, around 190 Interior and exterior? Yeah. Yeah, wow, 140 That's a good deal, Leo. Yes. Yeah. And did you go to them or did they come to you? I went to them. So how did that feel? It felt pretty cool, like going to their house to do a service for them. It was pretty cool. Because I was wondering if part of it was like fear, like what the hell was I thinking or <laughs> excited? <laughs> I was excited. <laughs> Like yeah. my first job, it was someone I didn't know. And yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, a full-fledged arm's length client. Yeah. Any other jobs that stand out for you? Um, There was one job that stood out to me. My dad has a friend in the gym. Uh, he's, I think he's a, he has really nice cars. He has like a Porsche GT3, which is like a few hundred thousand dollar car. Nice. And I... I've never been close to one before. <laughs> so, and I, I'm really into cars. So it was, it was really cool to do that car. Wow. And that's pretty special that he, this person was able to trust you with their vehicle too. Yeah. Yeah. With this, with cars like these, I, like I really make sure that I do not mess up anything. No. And that the cloths are like super clean. And yeah. early on, I was told to avoid those. <laughs> car washes that, uh, you know, yeah. raise funds at the side of the road. They said, cause they're not car detailing people. They're just kids that want to raise money and they'll drop a sponge in the gravel and just pick it up and then start yeah. doing your windshield again. Yeah. And so for something like a Porsche, yeah, it's uh, kit gloves. This is kind of why, uh, detailers charge these prices because the generic car washes, they like, uh, I hear they always like scratch these cars because they pick up like the grit and dirt from the road and then they it just goes onto the cars again so this yeah. is why because all of our all the equipment that i use is like i clean it before i make sure there's n no dirt on it and, and some of those collector cars in addition to the the high-end sports cars for many years i owned a self-storage facility and periodically we had some really nice cars come in for storage and this one guy uh, brought his vehicle in. I can't remember the make of it, but the shine on it. Oh, my gosh, Leo, like there wasn't a speck of dust on this thing. I'm in the middle of doing the contract with the guy, and I look out, and my cat is sitting on the hood. I was horrified. Of course, I didn't want to run out and startle the cat, so I had to break it to this guy. It's like, man, I really hate to tell you this, but um, <clears throat> that cat you saw in here a few minutes ago. <laughs> so he wasn't impressed, but uh, I offered to clean it. But of course, he's like, no, 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 thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> do you have any helpers or are you doing this on your own? When I do jobs at my house, and I know it's going to take a while, if it's like really dirty, I'll get my brother to do some things and then I'll pay him a small bit. A small bit? Okay. Yeah. Are you at least paying a minimum wage? Yeah. I okay. pay him, like I'll make him work for like an hour and then I pay him like twenty dollars. Oh, he must be pretty happy with that. How old is he? He is sixteen. He just turned sixteen. Right. Okay. Well, how are you finding clients? At the beginning when I first started, I would use the next door app. I would post some ads and I think I got three clients from the next door app but after that it wasn't helping me that much okay and then i know my dad has gotten me a lot of clients and i've had a bunch of family members and now i just got a bunch of business cards so whenever i see cars that i think could use a detail i put the i put the cards on like the driver's side window in a respectful way 
and that gets me some customers too. Oh, that's great. I love that initiative. What gave you the idea to put the business cards in the windshield? I think I saw a video where it said uh, how I started a successful detailing business at 16 and it showed like it was like swiping through and it was like all the steps and then I saw the business card on the windshield and uh, I thought okay that's definitely going to get me customers. Good for you because so often a person will come across an idea of something that they want to start or to improve what they've already got going and they think wow that's a really good idea but they don't act on it. So again uh, thumbs up for you for taking action. So in addition to that, are you spending any money on ads through social media or are you going to be testing the uh, cards in the windshield for the for the moment? Yeah, I'm testing with the cards right now, but I think in the summer I want to I want business to pick up a lot because I'll have nothing to do. So I think I'm going to start paying for ads. OK, well, you're full time in school, obviously. Um, you mentioned you're so you're working on the on the weekends then, how do you find that juggling school and work? How is that working or not working for you? It's been working pretty well for me. I think I try to get most of my school work done on the weekdays so then I'm free on the weekends. So whenever someone asks me if I can detail their car on the weekend, I'm always free. I usually do it on a Saturday because I, if I, if I have any leftover work, I tend to do it on a Sunday. I procrastinate a lot, so. <laughs> so are you involved in uh, anything else as far as uh, sports or your focus is on growing the business at this point? I'm in like a class on Sundays. It's for uh, junior youth. It's uh, like a program to empower junior youth. So I'm working towards becoming like an animator for that. And this isn't, uh, it's not for money. It's kind of a service thing. It's, it's for like resume building. So that's what I do on Sundays, but other than that, I'm free on the weekends. Nice. There are a lot of 17-year-olds out there who say that they would love to start a business of their own, yet they don't. What do you think made the difference for you? I think just my passion for cars and something, car detailing, I just feel like my passion is linked with something that can make a lot of money. So I think it was just easy for me to find this. Right. And that feeling of having a few bucks in your pocket. Yeah. I remember my first regular part-time job it started really when, like, I've been working regularly since I was 13 years old while I was going to school. And I loved that feeling of having a few bucks in my pocket that I earned. It wasn't my own business. It was a bakery I remember I started working for. But to me, that money in my pocket was money that I could spend the way I wanted to. So that felt like independence from my parents. Now, they saw it a little bit differently, but in my mind, it's like, okay, I can spend this how I want it. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, what are your future plans for Van Car Detailing? That's the name of your company, right? Yeah. 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 I think just during school, I want to do this. I know I'm not going to be doing this long term. It's just making me a lot of money. So I want to do this throughout my schooling. Okay. Do you ever see yourself getting other people involved if the demand grows yeah definitely i think my f friends have always asked me if, if they can join so i think in the summer if my business picks up then i'm gonna get some of them onto it right well what's the best way for our listeners to connect with you leo my instagram my phone number's on that if anyone wants to contact me through that van underscore card detailing so what's your best tip to inspire others to start or grow their side hustle dream? My best tip would be to find something that you're passionate about because that passion will keep you motivated when you face challenges. And once you know what you're passionate about, do some research and find some ways you can turn it into a viable side hustle. Right. It's good advice. Was there a particular challenge or surprise that you discovered as you got into the business? I think just overall doing these jobs, it's it's harder than it seems. Like seeing all these videos on TikTok and, and, on, and YouTube, it just seems easier than it is. But when you're actually at a job and it's like a really dirty car, it's pretty difficult. That's valuable to share because so often 
these TikTok videos or any in, in social media make starting and growing a side hustle looks so easy and six weeks from now you'll be on your sailboat no problem and it takes a lot of work and yeah. a lot of uh, growing that knowledge and your customer base so congratulations on your success so far and i really look forward to having you back on the show sometime in the future leo so you can give us an update on your business ventures but until then thank you so much for telling us about van card detailing and for being today's side hustle hero thank you so much for having me Did you catch episode 98 with Brian Clayton? It's called Hard Won Lessons Learned, Starting and Growing Green Pal. He and his partner built a lawn care platform and took it from zero to 30 million in revenue. So he knows a bit about growing a company. He talks about the value of viewing your new attempts at things as experimenting. I'm gonna get 10 customers for my lawn mowing business next week. I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to experiment posting on Craigslist. I'm going to experiment with posting on the Facebook group for my town. I don't know how that's going to work, but in a week or two, I'll have some data and I'll either continue, tweak, or try something else. Leo exemplified this exact mindset. He said, I'm going to try to put business cards on windshields. Maybe he'll get a ton of business. Maybe he won't. But the win is in the trying, in the testing, and then using the results to inform next steps. By taking action, he's much further along in achieving his goals. A brilliant example of this is one of the people I interviewed for my book, The Way Success Works, How to Decide, Believe, and Begin to Live Your Best Life. The book is really a mashup of three components. It outlines the steps, the way success works. It provides examples from my own life, and it features many young adult success stories. And I should note that none of the young people I included have any special talent or unlimited resources. They just got an idea and kept persevering. Case in point, Fraser Doherty from Edinburgh, Scotland. He started making jam based on his much-loved grandmother's recipe at age 13. By 16, and with his parents' permission, he quit school to grow his jam business full-time. At that point, he was still making the jam in his parents' kitchen, selling a thousand jars a week. Some nights, his parents could barely sneak into the kitchen to bake dinner. You could just imagine what the kitchen looked like. But to truly grow the business, he needed to get into a major supermarket chain. For that to occur, three things had to happen. Number one, he needed to move into factory production at a cost of about $75,000. Two, he desperately needed rebranding. For that, he was quoted tens of thousands of dollars. The product was called Super Jam, and it featured a graphic of a superhero on the label, which is fine for a 13 or 16-year-old, but as I'm sure you can guess, that's not the age range of the main jam buyers. Number three, the flavors had to be improved, which he could work on himself. His parents didn't have the money, and he was too young to get a loan. Those two factors alone would have stopped a lot of people. But it didn't stop Fraser. He was able to convince a local advertising agency to buy into his vision when they agreed to work on the branding for free in exchange for future work. As for the factory, his plan was to find one willing to put up the working capital to buy the fruit, the jars, and labels to make that first batch of thousands of jars. He contacted factories all across Scotland, all across England, trying to convince someone to produce his super jam. They all said no, except one. But that's all he needed. By the age of 18, Fraser's super jam was selling in a major supermarket chain. At the time I interviewed him, his jam was selling in a dozen countries across the globe, on the shelves of over 2,000 stores. So if you've got a dream of something that you would like to have or do or be, don't let present circumstances stop you, because they're just that, present circumstances. And rather than focusing on all the reasons why you can't do something, shift your thinking to deploy your incredible mental resources from why I can't to how I can. And I bet you will absolutely amaze yourself. Well, that's a wrap for today. You'll find links to Leo's Instagram and the full show notes at our website, sidehustlehero.com. If you're enjoying what you're seeing in this podcast, I would be so grateful if you would take a moment and add your comment, share the episode, and please subscribe. 
It really helps our ranking and it'll let others know that there's valuable content here to help them start or grow their side hustle. Thanks for watching and hustle on.